Welcome to Inquisitive, the show that discusses uh, issues on how to make the best out of uh, technology. On this fourth episode of the H Part 360 Leadership Series with General Robert Robert Kiboshi, Kenya's Chief of Defense Forces, we are hoping to learn about uh, character development within the military. Uh, CDF, sir, uh, you have had quite a unique journey, and from from an observation. Uh, that compared uh, your journey to maybe your pre predecessors and many uh, chiefs of uh, defense forces across the world, uh, it is it is it it, uh, it it catches the eye that uh, a unique uh, soldier from what would be referred to as a as a support service, yeah, has has made it right to the top of the to to the top of the of of the defense force. And uh, and uh, it is as opposed to very many other, which is military tradition in many defense forces, that it is mainly uh, front or arrowhead uh, battlefield uh, soldiers that have largely been uh, been elevated to the position you are in. So uh, your position is unique in, in in various ways, and of course you've 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 had your stints, you've had uh, your, your leadership. Uh, uh, achievements in very many ways. So, what we'd like to start understanding is uh, how does how is the military developing its soldiers beyond the expert domain to which they were recruited, so that to make them overall leaders. Sir? Thank you uh, very much. I, I, and I, you're right um, to a large extent, uh, and I think it's important to uh, to underscore that um, the military profession. Uh, uh, is a profession, uh, uh, just like uh, uh, the profession of journalism uh, or the medical profession. Uh, the military profession is a profession of arms. Uh, there are three uh, key areas uh, that uh, are considered arms. You have what we call the combat arms. And you're right when you say, for example, that uh, to attain to the level of a CDF, largely you might, you must, largely you have to come from the combat arms, and for good reason. The combat arms are the arrowhead, as you said rightly. Uh, in the Kenya Defense Forces, uh, we talk about combat arms as those that are the maneuver formations. You have the infantry. Uh, you have armor, uh, and you have similar uh, capabilities in the Air Force uh, and the Navy, uh, the fleet uh, and the, the, the fighter wings uh, of the Air Force. Because these are the capabilities that really lead into, into the war fighting. Then you have the combat support arm, and you're right. Uh, so that's why it's becoming a, a profession of arms. You have the combat support arms. And those combat support support the arrowhead. Uh, the, these include the artillery uh, that uh, apply the indirect fire weapons. And therefore, they have to be very much behind uh, the front line uh, of, 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 of engagement. Then you have uh, the combat uh, engineers uh, who provide uh, the mobility and survivability in, uh, in war which is critically important. And rightly, as you said, you have the communications uh, or the signals, which basically is the glue that binds everybody together. Uh, it is, the, uh, it, it is the, the one that provides the linkages along the, 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 the chain of command uh, to be able for the commanders to not only command their forces, but also control them. You have to be able to communicate. And, and, and for that reason, then, uh, you have to be able to see that that is a component that is, is in between the, 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 the arrowhead and what we call the logistics uh, arms, which are called the combat su service support arms uh, that provide the logistics uh, to the fighting forces. Now, the, the, the reason, then, uh, of why would the combat support 
leaders also assume the leadership uh, is within the context of the Kenya Defense Forces is uh, underpinned by how we are organized, particularly in the training. The training in the Kenya Defense Forces is, is joint, as I said. We train together at the Kenya Military Academy. Whether you are a cadet from the Air Force or the Army or the Navy, and when you finish and you graduate, you train together at the various other colleges. For example, the Defense Staff College. You all meet together. Uh, when you go to the National Defense College, you train together. So ordinarily then, you have an equal chance uh, of getting to the top. But not as equal because the majority of the officers who are in the forces belong to the combat, uh, combat arms. Uh, so it is therefore possible, uh, as uh, I have assumed this job, that you can come from the combat su support arm uh, to become uh, the CDF. Uh, and, and, and I think the reason for that is that in addition to your being um, having a profession of engineering, say in telecommunications, uh, or in civil engineering or in mechanical, you are also trained as a combat uh, officer because you've also gone through the same, the same train. Uh, and, 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 and that's really, uh, to me, uh, when I talk to uh, the officers, I say, anyone uh, can become uh, whatever you want to become. Uh, what you need to have is to work hard and a little bit of luck. Uh, because that is critically important. But you have to work hard. Uh, you have to work hard uh, for you to be able to uh, be uh, picked by your superiors uh, because they have seen that you have qualities uh, that can be able to uh, lead. Again, just like we talked about honors and awards, this whole question of progression in the Kenya Defense Forces is, is based to a large extent on how hard you work along the path and, and and it is it is it is competitive it is very competitive and the pyramid is very is very narrow uh, so there has to be uh, a lot of uh, effort uh, and a little bit of luck uh, then you get there yeah. okay yeah so uh, in the in the civilian space especially in technology right. uh, we there's a lot of emphasis probably disproportionately as as you have alluded uh, compared to the to to what is in the military uh, emphasis on uh, on technical expertise so someone is really good at writing code or someone yes. is very very good at designing and that is what propels them to the top it sounds like in the military the character development is probably more important or equal do you want to i think that uh, character development in the military is um, is a, is a is a bedrock uh, of you becoming a, a leader uh, and in fact what has happened uh, of late is that uh, close to 60% of our training uh, for cadets, for example, uh, at the military academy, is character development. And, and, and for good reason, because it is the character that defines uh, a leader. Uh, not that technology is not good, but the character is, 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 is critical because of the traits that you must go through, that, the traits that must be developed, the traits of uh, integrity, uh, this, the traits of uh, sense of duty, the, the traits of commitment, uh, dedication, they are critically important uh, for a military leader. And for good reason, because as I said, the profession of arms, uh, unlike other professions, is about life and death. Those leaders, uh, as young as they are, they will lead uh, their men into hostile environments. And if they have no character, they're going to lose men and women. And, 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 and for that reason, then, 
uh, character development becomes critical. Secondly, as you know, when you train uh, a young leader as a lieutenant and they join up with their, their unit, they will come out of the unit uh, of the training as very young 20-year-olds, 22-year-olds, um, young uh, lieutenants. They will be joining uh, the, the unit where they will be given to command some members of the platoon who are much older, probably the age of their father. And therefore, if you don't have character, and these are the people you're going to lead in war, you will not be able to succeed. Uh, and that character also allows, as a junior officer, for you to accept to be cancelled uh, uh, by, uh, to be mentored by those that you find, irrespective of their rank, and you accept it, because then it helps you to grow even, even more. So character is critically important. Yeah. 60% of, 60 the training of the training is, yeah. is, character, is development. character development. That's, that's, that's quite an investment. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 60 of 60 your 60 training of the is, is character is development. Character. That's 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 quite an investment. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and uh, and uh, to just uh, also talk about uh, you mentioned about how someone has to be identified or someone uh, is, is identified by their seniors uh, and their capabilities is identified. Do, how do you encourage your, your soldiers to position themselves for leadership or for, for expertise in certain domains that you feel they would be better placed in? I, 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 I think one of, the, one of the key issues is that uh, you provide equal opportunities uh, for uh, for, for, for uh, for soldier development. Equal opportunities to the extent that um, after graduating uh, as, a, as a service member uh, from the recruit training school, there are a number of training opportunities that are, that are available uh, to the soldiers. And you will find that there are those uh, soldiers who are highly motivated, just like uh, in a classroom environment who are dedicated, they show leadership qualities in wherever they are, and, and, and you pick them. Uh, and these are the people that ultimately you get to see uh, becoming leaders uh, in, in the various stages of their life. Uh, again, it becomes a personal motivation. You can be motivated, but you personally has to motivate yourself. Uh, and, and, and I said, you have to work hard. There's no substitute for that uh, at every level uh, of the organization. Somebody has to be able to be self-driven. And if you're not self-driven, uh, to a large extent, uh, you will fall by the wayside. Uh, and many have fallen on the wayside. And those that have displayed uh, the character of hard work uh, always find themselves moving in the right direction. direction. Okay, Thank you. you you've you've uh, you've pointed out to the fact that uh, at what is also what is quite visible right now in the in the in the outlook of the of the military that we are seeing younger people in higher rankings and we are seeing more ladies in the higher ranks of of, uh, of of our military and so how is the military handling the contemporary workplace dynamics and, uh, like intergenerational issues gender diversity and uh, and now you are handling about three or four generations how is the military navigating those 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 issues i think as i said one of the key issues about um, generational uh, uh, change, uh, which is inevitable, I I is that we have to remain ahead of the curve. Ahead of the curve meaning that uh, our doctrine, our training doctrine, must continuously align itself to the changing environment. We have to be able to align our doctrine to the technological evolution. For example, today, information uh, operations is a critical component in, in warfare. That never used to be uh, a couple of years ago when we joined. Because cyber security never used to be a problem. 
or cyber insecurity never used to be a problem. So that becomes a critical uh, addition to the doctrinal uh, perspectives that we, 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 we must have. Secondly, we look at the younger generation uh, who are coming in as a highly vibrant uh, cohort of young people who have the, uh, the sense of wanting to know uh, why they need to do what they are being told to do. So we have to be able to, uh, to, to agree that there will be those questioning. Yeah. And that becomes a, a, a critical component. Secondly, some of them are very, uh, uh, very unsettled. Uh, they, they want to be engaged. They want to have work to do. Uh, for example, a lot, a lot of them will come in and say, sir, you know, I want to join the special forces because they want to see action. You have to allow them to do this because it's important. Yeah. Yeah. Those that are coming with the uh, technology uh, background, uh, we have to create an environment for them to be able to exploit their potential. Uh, we have created, for example, some uh, innovation hubs where uh, you provide them with the resources to be able to, uh, uh, to, to develop certain um, uh, information systems, uh, such, a, such a software, for example. I keep on engaging a number of them, uh, including the one we're sitting here, uh, in, in challenging them. Why don't we, for example, um, automate our recruitment process? Uh, instead of what we do today, going to the counties to recruit people, why don't we just have it in a in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a software based assist uh, platforms uh, and, and and they are great they are great at that so we have to uh, be conscious and be alive to the fact that this is a new uh, generation uh, of uh, young people with very very creative minds uh, and you need to make use of that uh, those minds as we go into the cyber security domain and probably you'll be asking that uh, we need to engage them uh, because this is again an area that uh, we must get involved because as I said earlier every weapon system that we buy today has to have some electronic uh, component in it and it is vulnerable uh, to cyber uh, cyber threats so that's how we see it Thank you very much. Uh, we've come to the end of, of, the, of this fourth part. And uh, as you, I, I was gladly surprised to learn the, the amount of investment that the military is making on character development. 60% of their training is, is invested in character development. They're also facing challenges like, the, like everybody else in the private sector, intergenerational uh, issues within their ranks. And uh, it, it is great to learn how we can apply this. So Join us in the next episode where we'll be talking about transformational leadership in defense. Thank you very much.